going to start the surface marking and the radiological anatomy of thorax so first we'll start with the surface marking of thorax uh, so with parietal pleura so we'll start the surface marking of parietal pleura so the anterior margin or the costomedial line if you see here this is the anterior margin or the costomedial line which is extending from the sternoclavicular joint so you can see this is the sternoclavicular joint from here it will extend so it will extend from here and uh, join downwards medially to the midpoint of sternal angle so this is a sternal angle so to the midpoint of sternal angle it will join and uh, continue vertically downwards to the midpoint of skiffy sternal joint so this here will be the skiffy sternal joint so this line this line which is starting from the sternoclavicular joint and ending at the skiffy sternal joint this is called as anterior margin of the pleura parietal pleura or also called as costomedial line so next uh, what happens on the left side the line follows so this is on right side so on left side also the line follows the same course up to the fourth costal cartilage so you can see this is a level of fourth costal cartilage up to here the same as the right side but in the fourth costal cartilage you can see on the left side it arches outward and descend along the sternal margin up to the sixth costal cartilage this is forming a cardiac notch for the uh, you know for the placement of heart especially left side of the heart left ventricle of the heart so you can see this is the level of sixth costal cartilage so this is the difference of parietal pleura on the right side and left side on the right side it forms the costo media sternal line up to the skiffy sternal joint and on the left side it will form uh, it will stop at the fourth costal cartilage and from there it will arch and it will form a uh, cardiac notch and it will end at the level of sixth costal cartilage so now we will see the inferior margin also called as costo diaphragmatic line so this will pass laterally from the lower limit of anterior margin and so this is the lower limit of anterior margin right so from here it will start and crosses the eighth rib in the mid clavicular line so you can see this is the mid clavicular line that is the line between the two clavicles two sides of clavicles that is the medial side and lateral side of the clavicle you can see exactly it's in the middle part of the clavicle and this line will extend up to the uh, you can see like eighth rib so this uh, parietal pleura now will enter uh, up to the eighth rib by crossing the mid clavicular line so next from there it will cross uh, the mid axillary line you can see this is the mid axillary line so at the 10th rib so you can see this is the 10th rib so at the level of 10th rib it will cross the mid axillary line and 12th rib at the lateral border of sacrospinalis muscle so if you see actually this is the backward side of the lung it's like a 3d image so this is anterior side this is the posterior side on the posterior side also this uh, parietal pleura surface marking will continue up to the lateral border of sacrospinalis muscle where it will end in the 12th rib and uh, it further pass horizontally to the lower border of t12 that is 2 cm lateral to upper border of t12 spine so in the upper border of t12 spine finally it will end so you can see here this is the 12th rib so up to this upper border posteriorly it will continue so this is about the parietal pleura so you can see thus the pleura descend below the coastal margin at three places so if you see the pleura is descending below the coastal margin at three places especially first one at the right skiffy sternal angle so actually the skiffy sternal joint is divided into two sides for example this one is the skipper process right so this is skiffy sternal joint right so here this is right skiffy sternal uh, coastal joint and this is left skiffy coastal joint so that's what i'm saying now this will further pass horizontally to lower border of t12 lateral to upper border of t12 spine and the pleura is descending below the coastal margin at three places the first one is at the right coastal angle and at the right and left costo vertebral angles below 12th rib behind the upper poles of kidneys so you can see here this is the lower border of body of vertebra t12 or upper border of spine of the same vertebra so it's a t12 vertebra so till here this is a posterior side on the posterior side it will go till t12 and here it will end up on. so this is all about uh, the pleura and uh, next we'll have some points like surgical importance in exposure to kidney 
pleura may be damaged at this site especially this site the pleura may be damaged because uh, surgically we are uh, dealing with kidney and the posterior margins of pleura pass from 2 cm lateral to T12 spine so 2 cm lateral to T12 spine so it is the posterior margin of pleura and uh, it's also lateral to 2 cm lateral to 7th cervical spine Posterior margin of pleura plus from 2 cm lateral to T12 spine to 2 cm lateral to cervical spine means on the back side here will be a cervical spine so there also it will be 2 cm you can see here the level upper border of body of vertebra T1 and spine of C7 so this is upper border this is the lower border so these are the posterior borders which we are discussing these are the posterior borders and the coastal pleura becomes mediastinal pleura along this line coastal pleura becomes mediastinal pleura along this line because postal side right this side and it will turn into mediastinum because here the mediastinum is present so this is about the surface marking of parietal pleura next we'll start the surface marking of lung so surface marking of lung the apex okay we will see i can check it over here but it's better to see this diagram in this diagram so if you see the apex of the lung so yeah the apex of the lung coincide the cervical pleura so cervical pleura you can see this is a cervical pleura so apex of the lung touches the cervical pleura that is exactly 2.5 centimeters above medial one third of clavicle so you can see this is a medial one third of clavicle just above 2.3 centimeters you have the cervical pleura and the apex of the lung are coinciding and the anterior border of the right lung so this is the anterior border of the right lung close to the anterior margin or costomedial line of pleura by joining the point of semiclavicular joint the so same thing so same like pleura it will also uh, join the anterior costomedial line and uh, the point at the sternoclavicular joint here the point at the sternoclavicular joint another point is in the medial plane at sternal angle so same like for the pleura parietal pleura and the third point is in the medial plane above the skiffy sternal joint so if you see here it is above the so if you see the lung is above the skiffy sternal joint but if you see the pleura pleura is exactly it's having its point at the skiffy sternal joint so that's why you can see this is the lung it's above the skiffy sternal joint and the anterior border of the left lung you can see it's corresponding to the anterior margin of pleura up to the fourth coastal cartilage same and the lower part forms a cardiac notch from level of fourth coastal cartilage lateral for 2 3.5 centimeters from sternal margin and curves downwards medially reach the six coastal cartilage from the medial plane so the six coastal cartilage and cardiac notch uh, pericardium covered by double layer of pleura and this cardiac notch is the area of dull on precession and this is called as area of superficial cardiac dullness and the lower borders of the each lung lie two ribs higher than the pleural reflection so for example if you see this is a pleural reflection but this is a lung so if you see the lung is two ribs higher when compared with the pleura so that is how we'll understand uh, two, lung, uh, two ribs higher than the pleural reflection and cross the sixth rib in mid clavicular line so you can see the mid clavicular line it will cross its sixth rib but if you see here in the case of uh, pleura it is crossing the mid clavicular line in the case of eighth rib so that's why i'm saying that uh, the lung is two centimeters higher when compared with the pleura so it is eight so it is two two minus two eight minus two six so in the mid clavicular line at 6 and next 8th rib at mid axillary line so at mid axillary line 8th rib whereas in uh, pleura it's 10th rib and uh, next 10th uh, rib at uh, lateral border of erector spine and ends 2 cm lateral to 10th thoracic spine so if you see uh, in the case of posterior side there it's T12 but here T10 always remember it's 2 cm higher and next coming to posterior border it coincides the posterior margin of pleural reflection except at its lower end which lies at t10 so you know uh, the pleura uh, its posterior end it's uh, t12 but for the lungs it has uh, t10 so that is the only difference and uh, two centimeter point lateral to t3 spine anterior another 
point fifth rib in mid axillary line so actually now we will see how the horizontal fissure and oblique fissures are forming mainly the horizontal fissure uh, so where two centimeters lateral to t3 spine is a posterior side and another point fifth rib in the mid axillary line so if you see here this uh, so fifth rib at the mid axillary line and 3.6 uh, coastal cartilage and the third point is in the sixth coastal cartilage here from median plane and horizontal fissure is a uh, anterior border of right lung at fourth coastal cartilage and uh, second point is on the fifth rib in mid axillary line once again i'll clearly ex uh, explain about oblique fissure so first we'll start with oblique fissure oblique fissure is a 2 cm point lateral to t3 spine it will start on the back side t3 spine so this is the back side you can uh, imagine and from there another point will come in the fifth rib in the mid axillary line so in the mid axillary line uh, at the level of fifth rib will get another point and third point is at the sixth coastal cartilage from median plane so from the medial plane if you see the sixth coastal cartilage so like this the oblique fissure is formed there is a horizontal fissure is formed anterior border of right lung at fourth coastal cartilage one point and the second point at the fifth rib in mid axillary line so the mid axillary line fifth rib so this will form the horizontal fissure so by this we have completed surface marking of both parietal pleura and lung next we will start the surface marking of heart and also cardiac valves